Chapter 61. Insert the whale as role model. Whales don't pretend to not feel something they already know they feel. They care for each other and for the young. And besides, there's so many other things to do, like catch mackerel and skim the Gulf Stream and avoid fishermen. When they surface, they leap as far and as high as they can. Every time they breathe, they fire spumes of water into the air. Even when they slam their tails on the surface of the sea, they send up harmless little mini tsunamis. Nobody knows why they do this, but I think it's just another way of saying, I'm here. I'm in love with life and I don't care who knows. They do it to show how big their feelings are. Mum's working on the accounts when I run in. I have minutes at best and she looks like a browbeaten mouse. What's going on? She says. I pull out her pigtails and fluff up her hair while fighting off her hands. Angelica, why aren't you in school? It's Saturday, Mum. Told you she wasn't in with it these days. Lipstick? There, she says. Why? No time. Purse your lips. She presses her lips and I apply some and pink lippy. Not her best, but we'll have to do. You need. To, we need to go shopping. You need new clothes and new lippy. Pronto. Angel, will you stop for one moment before she can continue? Because I really don't think I have any many more of the right words left in me today. I fling the door open so Chris can come in. Tell him how you feel. They look at each other. Being grown-ups, this goes on for a while. Do you want me, he says, finally. Mum nods. About bloody time. A girl could waste a lifetime getting these two together. He holds out a hand and she takes it. It's all I can do not to barf right there and then, but it's so gorgeous and right. Come on, so he says, folding her hair back behind her ears. Let's get away from prying eyes and sort this out. They take their feelings to the beach and stand there, holding each other as if they'd just been washed up on shore. I've hidden myself inside the staircase that runs down from the hotel. I need to know everything's all right, and if, if it is, I promise myself I will never spy on them again. Remember our first kiss, he says. Mum doesn't answer. He kisses her neck. I don't know about you, but I thought it was amazing. Better than amazing. It was between you and Kitty, she says. Ah, but I was thinking of you. Yes, Chris is back. Amazing what knowing someone loves you finally can do for your confidence. See, what you didn't know, Molly, and were too pig-headed to ask at the time, was that you fancied me and I fancied you. I had my eyes closed all the time, pretending it was you. She's looking sceptical. He grins. The second kiss was better anyway. What second kiss, says Mum? I mean, get on with it. Stop toying with each other. Why do adults do this? It makes everything so complicated. As if he heard me. Chris kisses her. Seagulls swoop in off the sea and circle them. You'd swear they were bait. Out at sea, two whales surface and the water they blow into the air conjoins into a heart before falling into the sea. They, they pull apart, finally. That one says Chris. Not sure I remember exactly, says Mum, in a voice I've never heard her use before. I could try, he says, you know, to recreate. It might be tough, but I'd be willing to try. Chris is savouring every minute of this. I can feel the electricity from here. All my little nape hairs are standing up and dancing a frenzy. It's a new kind of dance, sends shivers down your spine in little gangs of twelve. That might be helpful, says Mum. When did she get so coy? Why can't I walk back up these stairs and into the kitchen and chat with Oni until it's all done? Even Oni going on and on about Simon. It has to be less frustrating than these two. If you're sure, says Chris. He's just as bad. They so deserve each other. I mean, I wouldn't want to. She kisses him. When the kiss finally ends, they are silent. Disappoint, he says, finally. They both smile sheepishly. How about next year's festival, he says. Oh, Mum looks disappointed. Why is he talking about the festival now? Unless he says you don't want to be seen walking down the aisle to marry an employee in front of half the world. Mum's face opens then into the deepest, happiest, most surprised smile and I find myself out on the beach, not even pretending to hide. A stray flock of sparrows spin into a ring above Mum's head as they do in cartoon strips when you get concussed. I like the picture, even if I'm the only one to see it and I try so hard not to blink to make it go away. Then the sun comes out of a gap in the clouds right above my head and extinguishes my cloak of invisibility. Come here, you, says Mum, pulling me to her. You've been spying on us. Oh, Angelica needed to know what was happening, says Chris. I nod. 
So, what do you think, Mouse? Can't say I match your father for looks or charm. <sighs> Enough already. Such nonsense calls for a bear hug that knocks the air out of him. Mum joins in then, and this three-way hug feels right. Warm and strong all at once. But then I step back. I'm not a child after all. I don't do bear hugs. Do bears even hug? I mean, they have claws and all. In case Mum and Chris haven't understood that a bear hug when you're a teenager is a definite yes, I gave him a shrug. I am masterful at shrugs. Be okay, I guess. Don't want them getting cocky either. Either I am, after all, the one who brought them together. Unless something better turns up. I mean, let's face it, both of you could do so much better. The insult and compliment drips off both their backs like warm oil. I can almost smell the lavender. Now will you tell us where you're from, I say? No, says Mum, he won't. Everyone's entitled to a few secrets. My father was a fisherman, says Chris, as we stroll along the beach towards the harbour. See, I say, that wasn't so hard. Well, when I say fisherman, he says, what I really mean is that he talked to fishes, but only really small ones. He reckoned that they held the secrets that he reckoned they held the secret of the universe as for whales. He's useless. I can get no information out of this man whom I love to bits. You two kind of need to get married, I say, really casually. Well, I never said I wasn't romantic. It's in the blood, after all, no matter how I fight it. Chris needs a daughter like me to keep him in line. Do I really, he says, mock scowling. Go, says Mum, when we're down near the harbour. Find that boy of yours and tell him the good news. Ah, no, that's not fair. You knew? Kitty told me. How come everyone can keep their secrets hidden in this town except me? Saw him skulking around reception earlier, says Mum. Seemed a bit shy. They're so busy being amused at my life, love life, they don't see me blush. Told him you might be in Simon's cafe later at three o'clock, say. But it's three now, I say. <gasps> so it is, she turns to Chris, smiling up at him. Can you believe how fast time goes sometimes? Grrr, I think I preferred her miserable. To be continued.